Today's video is going to be about all of the things you need when you first get your guinea pigs. It can be really overwhelming to find out what you need when you get your first guinea pigs because there's a ton of information online and pet stores mainly want to sell you stuff so it can be really hard to find out what you really need. So in this video I'm going to go over all of the basic things you need when you first get your guinea pigs. Okay, let's talk about the most obvious one which you can see right behind me which is Gatsby which is the guinea pigs enclosure. Now, when you last interacted with guinea pigs when you were a small child, you probably remember guinea pigs living in a really tiny store-bought guinea pig cage. Guinea pigs need quite a lot of space. They're also herd animals, so they do best in pairs and more. So getting three guinea pigs or four guinea pigs, people having five, six or seven guinea pigs is actually not that uncommon in the guinea pig community. So obviously you need a ton of space for a ton of guinea pigs. But even just two guinea pigs also need ample space to run around, hide and look for food. A general rule of thumb is 0.5 square meters per pig. That is 5.3 square foot per pig. Since you can't just get one guinea pig, the recommendation is actually one square meter per two guinea pigs, which is 10.7 square feet. Now you can roughly add 0.5 square meter or 5.3 square foot per additional guinea pig. This actually comes to quite a large space, way larger than you can normally find in a pet store. And there are different ways of getting this type of enclosure. Um, a really common one are either CNC cages or Songmic cages, where you just have these different panels and can just add more and more panels for more and more guinea pigs. Another alternative is building your own wooden cage, which we have done. You can see it behind me. We have went through a couple of different cages, so we tried out different designs and found what worked best for us. And this cage behind me cost roughly around 100 euro. We paid a little bit more because we needed to buy some of the tools. Also, if you opt to do less things yourself and do let the hardware store or let a carpenter help you, obviously, then it's going to end up costing more. But that is roughly what we paid for the cage. Look at these cuties. Let's talk about bedding. There are usually two popular choices for that. The first one is fleece liner, which I think is like most popular in North America. And then there's traditional bedding, which usually is some form of wood shavings. Now there are a couple of things to look out for when you use traditional wood shavings. So one thing you have to make sure is that you don't use any type of sawdust. Sawdust is way too dusty and also quite sharp for your guinea pig's feet. So you want to look for some bedding that is dust free and that is kiln dried. You also shouldn't use any type of setter shavings. And also no newspaper because the ink can get into your guinea pig's feet and it's not that healthy either. Fleece liners are also really popular. The cage that I have behind me has both. I have one side with bedding and then one side with fleece liners. Fleece liners are really easy to use. You just put them in the cage and after a couple of days you take them out, put them in the wash bag and then put them in the washing machine. And then you use a dustpan to get rid of all of the droppings during the day. So the fleece liners that we have, which I can really recommend, are actually IKEA bath mats. We also tried out Guinea Dad fleece liners, which are also great. Let's talk about the setup. So we already said that you need quite a big cage. Another thing that you have to look out for is guinea pigs are prey animals, so they like to hide. So giving guinea pigs ample spaces to hide, like different hideys, different tunnels, is really important. But you also need to make sure that your guinea pigs have ample space to run around. Be aware that when you set up your cage that you don't really block the guinea pigs way and that they can always run around in their cage. Keeping that in mind, it's really good to have a mixture of traditional houses, which are usually really dark and are really good for really skittish guinea pigs. But then also things like tunnels or willow bridges where the guinea pigs can also run through. Guinea pig hideys should always have two entrances so that in case your guinea pigs fight, one can always exit the hidey when another guinea pig is blocking one entrance. And I'd advise against plastic hideys because guinea pigs chew them and they can get quite hot in summer. Now let's talk about what guinea pigs eat. So guinea pigs mainly eat hay. So you need to get good quality hay for your guinea pigs and you need to keep it in your guinea pig's cage 24 seven. Hay makes up about 70 to 80% of your guinea pig's diet and then 20% is usually veggies. 
And then depending if you want to feed it to your guinea pigs, 10% can be pellets, but you can also opt out out of feeding pellets. However, when you do that, you have to make sure that your guinea pigs get all of their vitamins and nutrients from their vegetables. If you get high quality pellets, that's totally fine. I just really would advise against most of the store-bought mixes, which look really colorful and there are just tons of ingredients in them, because usually they aren't exactly healthy. So where I'm from, vets actually recommend to not feed pellets unless you're breeding or unless your guinea pigs are living outdoors all year round. So my guinea pigs eat 70% hay and then perhaps 25% veggies and then 5% is dried herbs, fresh herbs, and of course the occasional pea flake. Getting a bottle or a bowl. That is a really interesting question. Some people very much love their bowls because it's more natural for the guinea pigs to drink out of a water dish instead of a water bottle because they don't have to tilt their neck in such an unusual way. It really depends on what your guinea pigs prefer and what you prefer. In my experience, guinea pigs who grew up with a certain type of water dish or water bottle will always end up preferring that type. At the moment, I personally use both. So we have a water bottle and a dish, which I think especially in summer, it's really important that everyone gets their favorite type of form of drinking recommend having both in your cage but you can also of course just opt for one next up on my list we have chew toys if you go into a pet store you will often find lots of different chew toys but most of the time you don't really need anything that is specifically marketed as a chew toy so if you have wooden Heidi's or willow bridges in your cage your guinea pigs will usually chew those and will be quite happy with those so you don't necessarily need to buy any type of chew toys if you want to buy something special for your guinea pigs, probably the most favorite item that guinea pigs love to chew is a grass tunnel, which is just a little cardboard tunnel, which is covered in these little hay dust things. Most guinea pigs go absolutely wild on this thing. So for a special treat, I would probably recommend this, but you don't need to keep a specific type of chew toy in your cage all of the time if you have enough wooden or willow bridges. A hay rack also comes down to personal preference, but you should look out for some things, which is the hay rack shouldn't be able to fold on its own or the guinea pigs shouldn't be able to fold it themselves. So there are these types of hay racks which kind of look like this and your guinea pigs might be able to fold them close and get stuck in them. Guinea pigs can get really, really hurt with these things, so I would advise not to get anything that folds on its own or that easily folds. Also, the guinea pigs shouldn't be able to get their head stuck in a hay rack. So make sure that the wood is either close enough so that your guinea pigs can put their head through or they're wide apart enough so if your guinea pigs stick their head through, they can easily get it out again. In our case, the guinea pigs aren't able to get their head stuck on most part of the hay rack, but we have a really big opening for putting hay in and that is big enough that not only can they put their head in, but they can fit their entire body in this hay rack, sleep in there and get out. Another important aspect when it comes to a hay rack is if you work outside the home a lot, obviously it needs to be big enough that it holds enough hay that it lasts until you get back. Treats. The reality is your guinea pigs don't really need treats. My guinea pigs would probably protest because they're all really obsessed with pea flakes, which are their favorite treat and which is a treat I can really recommend. But guinea pigs don't really need any type of treat. You can just feed your guinea pigs veggies or herbs. Dill, parsley, lettuce is as much of a treat as any type of store-bought treat you can get them. If you want to get them something special, get them pea flakes, but don't feed too many of them. Your guinea pigs could gain a lot of weight if you fed too many of them. The carrier also comes down to personal preference. Personally, my absolute favorite carrier is this Ketit Cabrio pet carrier that I got. It's kind of expensive, it's actually for cats, but it is really big, it's really nice for the guinea pigs. We also have a type of carrier that is called a pet caddy. There are different advantages and disadvantages to different types of carriers. Pet carrier, for example, lets the guinea pigs get in and out themselves, which is really nice if your guinea pigs aren't too skittish. They can also look out, which some of my guinea pigs really enjoy. Also, that is something that works if your guinea pigs are not too skittish. Whereas the pet caddy has the advantage that if you have really skittish guinea pigs, you can just close the lid and they feel at least a little bit secure because they don't see too much they have a firm roof that is close to their heads so if you have a really really skittish guinea pig that might be a better option something that is technically not a everything you need for your guinea pigs but more of a everyone you need for your guinea pigs but 
find a vet before you get a guinea pig or before you get your guinea pigs because finding a vet can be really really hard you need to find an exotic pet vet because most small pet vets are usually specialized on cats and dogs so it can be really hard to find someone who really knows a lot about guinea pigs and guinea pigs unfortunately tend to be medically fragile so if they get sick they need help immediately and they need the right kind of help this is everything you need for your guinea pigs, but if you have a big enough enclosure, feed them high quality food and keep them in pairs or more. Your guinea pigs will usually end up being quite happy. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you guys next time. Bye.